What's going on, tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia, and we are the co owners of Glam Marina. Glam Marina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space and health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes. And welcome to Behind Glam Marina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women, entrepreneurs, working nine to five, jobs, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Yep. So before we dive into today's episode, if we as we do every single episode, we want to do a mental health check in, check in and we encourage you to do the same thing. Check in with your yourself as you listen to this podcast. So this week, we're um, the last Wednesday of Women's History Month. Kia, how is your mental health? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, you know, I paused when I was kind of thinking about what I was saying in terms of how we balance being successful mm-hmm. black women. I'm like, balance. I almost wanted to laugh because I questioned that, right? Am I really <laughs> balancing um, everything, which I think is that's why it's going to be a great topic today. But mm-hmm. um, mentally, I'm doing okay. I'm a little under the weather. So you guys might see me sipping on my tea here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. My daughter had a stomach bug this week and now I'm just mm. feeling a little, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. Just a little it's, off. You're a little off, a little tired. <laughs> I get that. I get that. <laughs> Trust me, all of 2023 so far, I've been drained, beyond drained. And so that's why I mm-hmm. thought today's topic would be good too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this week has been one of the best as far as work goes, as far as my nine yes. to five goes. It's, it was a blessing. Yeah, <laughs> It was a blessing. Yes. So yes, the blessings. <laughs> you gotta take the good weeks as you can. Um, yep. So that's good. That's good. So let's let's get into today's topic. So in today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission, we want to talk about exhaustion among Black women and radical self-care. Um, Self-care is more vital than ever, yet relaxation remains elusive for many Black women. So we mm. we know self-care is important. We know we're exhausted, but uh-huh. it's still kind of hard for us to obtain. We're so used to mm. just being overworked. So that's kind of what we're going right. to talk about today. Yeah. And I just want to first read the um, definition of radical self-care because I hadn't heard this term before. Right. So, me either. Yeah. Of course, we Love looked it. through a few articles for this topic. And so radical self-care looks like Actions that you don't have to pay for or are accessible to only the elite, but really push back against notions that as people, we are infatigable. Um, so it's, it's we know certain luxuries to practice self-care and to just be comfortable and relaxed cost money typically. And in the yeah. black community, we don't always have that extra money in our budget to do those things. Definitely. So we want to talk about ways that you can practice radical self-care, which is, you know, you don't have to pay for yeah, no, I love that. I I um also have never heard of the term radical self care. I like that. It's like radical, you know. What I mean, it's like I'm pushing back, and that's kind of what it is. It's really just grasping at like what are some things that you can do for yourself, for your mental, your emotional, your physical, mm-hmm. your spiritual that doesn't require you to have to spend a whole lot of money because yeah. that can be stressful. Like I was reading the article, you know, kind of the wellness industry and that stuff. Cause we're, I feel like a part of the wellness industry in some aspect, we do sell active wear clothing um, and apparel because we want women to feel good, mm-hmm. but, and look good, but um, wellness industry in terms of, um, and things that could work like candles and bath salts and things like that, that are nice, maybe a bubble bath, but the radical self-care is really talking about how some of these things are for the elite. We have to mm-hmm. really consider that not everyone can afford money or the time possibly, you know, for a bubble bath, a bubble bath may not be re- uh, relaxing and, and it just kind of contributes to like the consumerism. Mm-hmm. So I love that the radical part of self-care is, you know, figuring out some ways that you can practice self-care without having to, you know, spend a whole lot of money and yeah. drain you. So um, in a recent article from Allure magazine, it states that there are two problems. Black women don't get en- enough rest and we don't get all the types of rest that we need. Um, the article reads, culturally and generationally, we have seen our mothers and grandmothers take on so much. Because of that, we've learned to hold on to everything 
Um, we feel the need to prove ourselves to society, which causes us to overwork to be the best. So. Yes. Yeah. So it's like his, historically as a people, as black women, we just take on so much. Yeah. Um, and so it's important for us to make sure we get the rest that we need. Mm-hmm. So the article also states that rest isn't only about or always about stopping. It's about doing activities that's, that fills us up. Mm-hmm. So really in this podcast, we want to talk about the seven types of rest that they discuss in the mm-hmm. article and just kind of give you guys ideas on how you can make sure you get the appropriate rest. So you're not feeling overworked as a black woman in today's society. Yeah. Yep. And I like how the mention the article mentions about, you know, we've seen our moms and our mm-hmm. grandmothers take on a lot. And I feel like as a black woman, you really can relate to that. Um, yeah. Just, you know, the women in our lives, like having to do everything, <laughs> take care of the household and work, you know, yeah. we never really had the luxury of um, always being stay at home moms. Mm-hmm. And, and so always having some type of job. And so it's like, we've seen that and we yes. feel like that's just acceptable, right? That we just overwork ourselves and push through and, and don't complain and yeah. don't ask for help and things like that. So these articles are really great. I, I enjoy reading them um, just because it's like, you know what, it's giving ourselves permission to say that I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be overworked and stressed. I can feel like I feel as though I'm overworked. I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. And that's okay. And exactly. Exactly. And one of the articles that started with like, all my friends are tired. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a thing. It's a real thing. And it's important for us to acknowledge it and acknowledge that that's not normal for us to always feel exhausted and overworked. It's not, right. we're used to it. Yeah. And I was going to say too, growing up, my mom was a single mom and mm. I don't think I've ever seen her practice self-care because mm-hmm. it was no time for that. Like she had four kids to raise. She had to work. I've never really seen her be able to relax and be able yeah. to rest because she's always trying to you know do what she has to do for her children so and i know case by case black families some people may have had the luxury of a two-parent home or opportunities to have some type of self-care but just growing up personally i've I've never really seen my mom even when i get her a massage for mother's day she's like i don't want nobody touching my, 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 my body because <laughs> she's not used to it's foreign to care. our parents or our mothers i agree exactly. I, and i feel like even to be honest i grew up with a two-parent household until my father passed away at 13. So, um, but my father was in the military. He was, he had, uh, you know, a lot to do his job. Um, and I feel like even when there's a two parent household, the mothers, black women, black families, especially, cause you know, the, uh, we're black. So I can only go off mm-hmm. of our perspective. I just have witnessed though, that, you know, even if the husband or the dad is there, the mother is still doing most of the work. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They're still working. Cause I agree. I saw my mom, taking care of our kid, her kids, taking care of her family, you know, her siblings, um, aging parents, just that she took on so much. And I never really saw her the same thing going for a massage or I don't know, lighting candles, meditating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> our moms really wasn't, weren't really doing that. And I think again, because we weren't afforded that, um, that we weren't uh, um, able to do that. You know, we couldn't afford to do that. A lot of us right. didn't have that expendable income to exactly. maybe get a massage or childcare to, to leave the kids at home. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's why, again, radical self-care is, you know, finding ways that you can take care of yourself without having to pay for it. And um, that doesn't add more stress to your life. So, all right, let's jump into the seven types of rest. Um, the first one, mental rest, is allowing our minds to be quiet and still without ruminating on what needs to be done. Meditation is a wonderful way to access this form of rest. Yeah. And I think that's that's probably the first one that comes to mind when we think mm-hmm. of rest, aside from sleep, is just being able to not think about what's worrying us and just sitting. So mm-hmm. that's that's the simplest form, free. Find some time in your day, some quiet yeah. space. When the kids are asleep, I know, I think, I don't know if you said this before, Kia, or I did, but just finding time to go in the bathroom and shut the door yeah. <laughs> to yourself and just let your mind rest for a second. So mm-hmm. I try to do this um, as often as I can. It's not always realistic, but um, mm-hmm. just finding time to meditate, even if it's for a few minutes. Yeah, I agree. I like this one too. And I found, I don't do it always, but when I do, I find that I sleep better. Um, Cause within the articles, 
here, it said something about, you know, suffering from insomnia. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly worrying about all of the things that you have to be, that you have to do, it has to be done. And that I suffer from um, insomnia. Sometimes I have trouble sleeping. I don't think it's even like, I'm not getting enough. I used to say that I'm going to bed too late. I'm not getting enough. I don't think it's enough sleep. I think it's the quality of my sleep. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though, you know, if I'm tossing and turning most times it's because I'm just so much something yeah. about, but I also feel like I'm like, what have I contributed to that? I was watching my phone before going to bed, you mm-hmm. know, I was, so I think, you know, to be able to ha- to sit still, what can you do to help you be able to sit still also yeah. have to think about that. So with a couple things, maybe writing what needs to be done for like tomorrow so yeah. that I'm releasing it out of my mind and I put it on paper so I can like let that go. And then I like how I said, meditating, turn your phone off. (laughs) I have, I hate it because I'll be like watching my housewives or watching something or, or reading an article, you know, it's Mm -hmm. not always pleasure, but, um, I think that if you can turn your phone off before you go to bed, it it has helped me personally to get a better quality of sleep. I'm not tossing yeah. and turning as much. And you, you you bring up a good point though, because I know a lot of black women I've talked to, like my, my old boss, my older sister, a lot of women are having black women are having trouble mm-hmm. sleeping at night. And a lot of them are like, oh, I've tried melatonin. I've tried white noise. It's not working. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I like that in a sense that it's probably where I know I worry a lot. I'm always Mm -hmm. like, because we have to do so much. Right. Um, So I I like (laughs) writing it down and releasing it. I do that. I keep a planner. I keep a checklist. And Mm -hmm. once I see at the end of the day, everything I did for the day, I feel good. I feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. And then I can save the rest for the next day. So I, I love that writing it down to release it. And hopefully that helps you to be able to rest a little bit. Yes. It helps you to be able to sit still because we always hear about sit still, meditate, but what step can you do before that to get, to be able to sit still and stuff and then go to sleep or do work or what have you. So I love it. All All right. right. um, You want to go for the next one? So creative rest is the next one. So this is about experiencing beauty in art within ourselves without using our own creativity labor to manifest it. Mm. So think about spending a weekend in the mountains, mountains, lying on a beach or attending a live show. So I like this one too, because it's not like you have to make music yourself or go paint or whatever to get that creative rest. But it's Mm -hmm. more like, like they have these little, um, tiny houses in Virginia. Mm -hmm. You can go and just stay in the woods and just soak up the scene Something yeah. like that, where you can just sit back and look at the the beauty of the world of nature, even if it's just mm-hmm. sitting outside. Um, if you don't have a beach nearby, just sitting sitting outside on a nice day and just looking around, that can mm. be creative rest to just help ease your mind and like kind of take your mind off of the worries or the stresses that you experience. Yeah, I, I when I first read this, I didn't one hundred percent understand, but now I get it. Experiencing beauty and art within ourselves without using our own creative labor. So it's almost like soaking in someone else's creative labor to yeah. just experience it. You know, if you like art and stuff, but you don't have to. If you want to paint, and that helps you find. You can also, like I said, attend a live show. You know, something else. See someone else's artwork. Um, go to a museum. Yeah. I have actually done that before a couple of times. Being in the DMV. I used to love taking the Metro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not from the DMV. So obviously like the Metro used to excite me and I would take the Metro <laughs> into DC by myself. It was be like an adventure um, because my boyfriend at the time did not like to do stuff like that. But I would take the Metro out to like the African Art Museum um, at the Smithsonian or just something, you know, and that that was for me, my kind of relaxation. You know, what I mean, it didn't cost a whole lot. The museum, I believe, is free. But the Metro, a couple dollars and, you know, you see some scenery, some beauty while you're riding. So, yeah, yeah, I think I really love that kind of soaking in someone else's creativity and you don't have to like exert yourself. Exactly. Um, Yeah. Okay. All right. The next one, social rest is when we chill with friends who would rejuvenate us rather than with people who drain our energy. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) It is a good one. It's, it's, it's definitely a good one because Mm -hmm. You have people that, you know, if you go around them, it's just a a breath of fresh air, whether they're the comedic type or they're just calming. They're always reassuring versus people that bring you down and just uh, tell you their struggles every time you see them. Like, oh, 
like they're just complaining about life. That's that's definitely not the type of person you want to be around when you're trying to achieve social rest. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I like, and we have to pick and choose. I mean, sometimes it's not so black and white of who drains us and who doesn't. Is mm-hmm. if we're if we have a you know a friend group, if you have a friend, a good friends, sometimes your good friend might drain you, and it's okay to acknowledge that and to like separate or you know create space between you and your friend for a while and do meet up with someone else another Mm -hmm. friend um that is going to again you know help us and build us up and rejuvenate us you know fill us up spiritually mentally emotionally you know you might have it could be your best friend and you Mm -hmm. love her but she complains a lot so Mm -hmm. you might not need to call that friend in this when you're in a space of like you know what i really need to fill myself up I, i need to you know, take care of myself. So I like that one. Social rest. Yes. So the next one on the list is spiritual rest. So it's how we cultivate personal relationships to achieve something greater than ourselves, which is uniquely defined by everyone's individual spiritual journey. Um, So personal relationships, cultivating Mm -hmm. them to achieve something greater than ourselves so I think this one for me, unique, uniquely defined by everyone's individual spiritual journey. So this mm-hmm. is just kind of what, what it's unique to each person, right? Yes, it's your right. own spiritual journey. So whatever you need to do to get to a place where your spirituality is, is there, I guess, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm getting closer to uh, prayer and that's a lot mm-hmm. of times with myself because when you're going through so much, yeah. Sometimes that's the only thing you turn to is, you know, God help me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need you. Yeah. Just whatever your spiritual journey is, um, is important to have that mm-hmm. and to help relax yourself and rest. I agree. Cause we always say that we need, you know, relaxation. We need um, self-care and physical mental, emotional, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Um, And I like how this article, you know, it says defined by everyone's individual spiritual journey. So it doesn't mean if you, you know, whatever your God or higher power, Mm -hmm. um, if you believe in something greater than yourself, you know, how can you continue to cultivate that relationship with that power? So whatever that means for you, but I, girl, I agree. There are some days, especially at work. I'm just like, God, I have to pray before I go to work. Mm-hmm. I have to pray during work. <laughs> I, I get it. And sometimes that's the only person you can turn to. Again, whoever, whatever your God is, whatever your religion is. Uh-huh. But there are times where you find yourself in life like, look, it's too much. And, and that's the only yeah. person you can turn to. To, to it's, it's a conversation with you and your God and just trying uh-huh. to find that find that 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 thing you need to be able to continue yeah to fill you up definitely and i think what's great about that is that you can have that conversation anytime anywhere exactly. just about you know what i mean there's it, it it's free it doesn't require anything it's except for maybe a quiet space but there's times i'm whispering and talking to god even when my office mate is in the <laughs> office i mean you know you can have that and again um, we're not trying to go super religious, but God, higher power, anything that you feel is um, outside of yourself, above, higher than you. If you need to just, you know, call on that to get you through the day, you can do that at any point. And so that's like one of the best um, forms uh, or types of rest, I feel like, is definitely yeah. having that that connection to your to your higher power. Okay. Another type of rest, according to this article, physical rest is divided into passive and active. The former requires napping and sleeping. So that would be the um, passive. The latter invites music relaxation, such as doing yoga. Oh, I'm sorry. Muscle relaxation. (laughs) I mean, music is good. Music is good too. Yeah. Okay. So physical rest, passive and active. You can have passive physical rest. So that's napping, sleeping, which by the way, I can't take naps anymore. I used to back in the day, but I just get groggy. It doesn't help me, but some people really love their napping or obviously sleeping and then active, active physical rest. That's um, muscle relaxation, like yoga. Yeah, I love that. I never really thought of physical rest being uh, passive and active. 
Yeah, because I, I didn't either, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. Napping for me is it's hard too because it's like if I'm going to nap, I'm going to I'm done for the day. Like if I'm yeah, <laughs> I think I'm asleep for the day. Um, yeah, right. but, but I do like the the idea of this active physical rest where you are relaxing your muscles and mm. yoga is just. I'm not a yogi per se or a super expert, Mm -hmm. but whenever I am cut on a YouTube video and follow along with the yoga instructor, Mm -hmm. I do feel you feel good. You know, you're at Mm -hmm. peace. You're resting physically. You're just not sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just or overexerting yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're you're moving your body, but Mm -hmm. it's it's for it's not labor. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yoga can be tough for sure. But, um, if you're someone like me who's like not super flexible, however, it's still not, you know, lifting weights and all of that. You're not overly exerting yourself. It's in a way creating that muscle relaxation as you're, you know, stretching and moving. And another suggestion outside of me turn, trying to turn my phone off before going to bed, I do stretch, I have a foam roller. So I get on the floor for about 10 minutes and just stretch and move my legs, my body. I roll out my back, my muscles. And again, that's that um, active, but it's still physical rest because I'm like relaxing my body in a yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So the next one is sensory rest. So sensory rest asks us to be aware of the external stimuli that exhaust us. So Zoom calls, our phone screens, and to set firmer boundaries to avoid burnout. So that, mm-hmm. that goes, I feel like you've mentioned that a couple of times during this uh-huh. episode, putting down your phone, like disconnecting mm-hmm. um, so that yeah. your, your senses are at peace. You know, you're not trying to, you're, you're, you're putting down these boundaries. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I don't care what's going on right now. I'm not taking that yeah. Zoom call. I'm not getting yeah. on my computer. I'm not even the TV. I'm not cutting on the TV. I'm just going to, set boundaries and cut all of this off. Even if you do this, I I wish I could, but I can't have times Mm -hmm. a day. That's like, okay, I'm not looking at my phone until this time. And then after this time, Mm -hmm. I'm not either. So I I hope to get there one day, but not there yet. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it talks about, I mean, the thing is, it's like, we don't want to be overstimulated and we are, you know, Mm -hmm. we are, our kids are We're constantly looking at a screen and and hearing and doing something. And I really try to practice here in my own home uh, rest, like quiet time. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, she's eight, she doesn't take naps anymore. But if we are say at home all day on a Saturday or even half the day, at some point, everything gets turned off. Um, I will play some music, but you have to just sit still. And she hates, hates it. Cause kids are like, what yeah. are gonna do? you know, and I feel like I'm like that at times too. Like I need to be, we feel like we need to be doing something yeah. that is like the basis, like the core of this article is that we constantly feel like something needs, the TV needs to be on. I need to be cooking. I need mm-hmm. to be like, I'm just thinking of being at home um, yeah. or I need to be working or I need, I need to be journaling. I need to be planning yeah. instead of turning everything off. And it's a little scary, but I, I, it's I challenge scary. all of you listeners to try it. Like try 10 minutes, turn everything off and sit still and yeah. quiet. You know, you yeah. don't have to meditate or anything. You don't have to stretch it's and do yoga. Just sit still. It's mm-hmm. hard. I was going to say too, and kind of doing research for this episode, there's a lot of talk about hus- hustle culture and how we just feel like we always mm-hmm. got to hustle, 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 especially as black yeah. people. Cause we're so far behind. We're trying to yeah. catch up financially. So um, hustle culture. It's it's hard to cut cut your phone off. I'm like, oh, did we get an order? Did we did we get an email? Yes. It's, it's really really. Did I hard. respond to the email? Did yes. I? <laughs> so it's hard, but I definitely challenge everyone to to try it too, even if it's in small doses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like what you said. Unplug and boundaries. You know what? I feel like in an article it did mention something about you know as black women just always trying to be the best. I feel like we need to be doing something to prove that we're the best, mm-hmm. especially if you're trying to balance work and your home life, right? Or your work and be an entrepreneur. So I know at work, there are opportunities where I could stay later or, or um, volunteer for a certain project or something like that. And to be honest, a lot of times I don't because I have had to create boundaries. I cannot compare myself to any other employee who there, you know, there are teachers yeah. there that they're at everything, every before school thing, mm-hmm. every after school, they are volunteering. I can't do that. I That's can't, not healthy. Uh, it's not healthy. And it's a boundary. Like, yes, but could I do extra at work to prove that I'm committed and dedicated to my job? I could do that, mm-hmm. but I've had to say no 
because I'm committed to my business in Glamorina. I'm committed to also wanting to spend time with my daughter. I don't want to stay at work all night. You know what I mean? So I really, really like that part. I think that it ties into everything and just a matter of unplugging, creating boundaries. Boundaries is big. And I'm actually reading a book right now called Boundaries. I can't remember the author, but my friend put me onto it. I'm halfway through it. And it's it's a little bit of spirituality in there, but it's big on how to set boundaries and having this imaginary fence where everything can't be inside of your gate or your fence all the time. So Mm. it's a great book if anybody is interested. Oh, yes. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Boundaries. Yep. Okay. It's, a, it's a white and red cover. So I can't think of the author right now, but yes, Boundaries is the name of it. I love it. I think that's perfect. That's exactly what we need right now. <laughs> okay. All right. And then the last um, type of rest is emotional rest. It's the ability to be honest and authentic when expressing our emotions, giving ourselves permission to feel whatever arises without judgment. I really yeah. like that one. The ability to be honest and our authentic when expressing our emotions and giving ourselves permission to feel whatever arises. Okay. I, I like yeah. that. I'm, you know, I feel like, again, if you say you're sitting in your quiet time for your couple of minutes, um, so I think sometimes we are overstimulated because we are trying to drown out whatever feelings and emotions we might be going through at that time. I do that at least, you know, I don't want to sit quiet too long because everything's going to come up, all of my feelings. But you know what? I've also realized that sometimes that has to happen. Yeah. Because trying to squeeze and push everything in always is a, is heavy. That's a heavy load to carry at all times. So yeah. perhaps um, allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to, Something's coming up and I'm thinking about something good or bad, but in particular, something that doesn't make me feel the best. I'm allowing myself to feel it and to go through that emotion and and not judge myself. Like you should, you should be over that by now. Mm -hmm. Cause we do that a lot, right? If we think about past relationships or things that we did wrong at work for that day, right? We're just like over, you know, like critiquing ourselves and maybe just have that feeling assess. Yeah. I could have done better. I made a mistake and then moving on, give yourself permission to express, to feel it and then be able to kind of let it go too. Yeah. And and I like being honest with how you feel. So I think Mm -hmm. this is spoken about during, in the book boundaries as well. It's like, if you're calling me to talk about an issue that you, you constantly call me about and I'm just, I just don't want to hear it. It's okay. If I feel like I don't care, I, I can authentically have my opinion, how I feel mm-hmm. and, and be okay with it and accept it because otherwise mm-hmm. I'm going to be emotionally drained if I, I allow that to come into my emotional state. So if yeah. I don't care about something that's happening, it's okay to say, I don't care right now. Yeah. You know, this, oh, you know, are you okay? What can I do to help? It's so okay. mm-hmm. my emotional state right now requires me to not care. And that sounds, yeah. it sounds terrible, Yeah, <laughs> but it's no, true. I, I, if I need emotional rest, I need emotional rest at that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You, we can't take all, um, all of, uh, all the emotions. We can't take everyone's emotions. So what I'm trying to say is our friends, like you just mentioned, like if our friends might be going through stuff, it's good to be a good friend and to support your friend. You also though can acknowledge that perhaps you can't um, take in more emotional stress because it's draining you so that it's okay to say, you know, I don't, I'm not able to really help you because I'm holding on. <laughs> right. It's not, you, have, you don't have thread. to say it to your friend. I don't care. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. To yourself. Saying. Yeah. To yeah. yourself. Right. Yeah. In order to like, exactly. Yeah. Acknowledging to yourself that like, I, I know that I just can't really be there for that person. Um, you know, because I just, I have to take care of my own emotional state right now. And that's okay. I think yeah. again, giving yourself permission to it go, it all ties in, right? All of yeah. the seven types of rest that we talked about, I feel like the core is rest and then it's just branches off into these other elements because they definitely all tie in. You have to unplug to be able to sit still. You have to create boundaries. Um, you know, you have to connect to maybe a power that's higher than yourself. You, ha- you have to maybe, you know, not worry about uh, overexerting yourself and yeah. relaxing your muscles. So everything just really ties in to, again, it's like a radical self-care in a sense of you don't have to pay a whole lot of money 
or any money. There's so many free yeah. things that you can do exactly. to be able to, to engage in some type of self-care for your mental, your physical and, and emotional and also yeah. your spiritual. Yeah. Oh, and man. I think that's, that's the thing. So to recap with this podcast episode is about understanding and realizing that black women are often or always exhausted. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's comes, it comes down generationally. It's a whole mm-hmm. hustle culture. So we, yeah. we understanding that, acknowledging that, and then trying to figure out how we can combat that. So mm-hmm. hopefully listening to this episode, you can kind of understand the different type of types of rest that you may need and try to incorporate those things or be conscious of those things as you kind of navigate right. and um, just live a little, live a little better, have more of a well-rounded, healthier mm-hmm. life. And it doesn't always Absolutely. have to cost money. Absolutely. Love it. Yep. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode of Behind yes. Glamorina, Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yes. And this is a much needed conversation. I love this topic. I feel tired all the time. So I really want to go back into these articles and um, kind of dive in and see what kind of things I can practice starting today. Um, be sure to visit glamorina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Stay well. And until next time. Oh,